So this uh, was a sub-study of the large registrational study of lysocaptic gene marrow. We saw in the second-line treatment of patients with large cell lymphoma, this was the registrational pivotal study that led to the approval of the drug uh, as a randomized trial for patients with relapsed or refractory large cell lymphomas. That study showed the advantage of this cell therapy over standard of care therapy um, and led to the approval of the drug, and it's been a very important uh, part of our armamentarium for treating patients with relapsed disease. But this sub-study was focused on whether that result could have been interpreted earlier. And a couple of different key objectives. The first main objective was uh, how well would this work in the large, larger patient population, what we call the intent-to-treat population. Um, and so the patients on this study, uh, the intent to treat population, all had blood-based testing uh, with foresight diagnostics in a blinded fashion um, with uh, the baseline blood sample used to measure the presence of circulating tumor DNA and then to quantify it without use of tumor tissue. This was successful in the majority of patients, 85% of patients, um, and met the objective of trying to measure tumor burden as compared with stage or prognostic indices or uh, tumor volume measurements or lactate dehydrogenase levels, all known clinical parameters, but now a singular blood marker for measuring all of these things in a quantitative fashion. Uh, so that was quite promising, but the bigger study was focused on how not the baseline levels, but the dynamic levels after the experimental therapy was administered changed and how they might predict the ultimate outcome of the patients. That was really exciting to see because the experimental arm was profiled longitudinally as early as day 15, but all the way through the treatment follow-up uh, a year out and then at progression. And what was observed there is um, this is a one-time therapy that's administered, uh, and generally we have to wait a substantial amount of time to really know whether the two arms of the study would be different. Of course, we didn't in this presentation study the control arm, but the therapeutic efficacy of the experimental arm was read out. And what was really striking is uh, how quickly um, MRD levels changed. So by day 15, one could see that of the patients who ultimately had failure, about 90% of them could be discerned within 15 days of getting a cell therapy. That's quite a remarkable thing. And among patients who went on to achieve uh, complete remissions, that result was observed very early on um, and only marginally improved over time, even though the re remissions did, did get deeper. But I think that affords us a, a few potential future steps. So as exciting as TRANSFORM and the other clinical trials um, have been um, for using T-cell-directed therapy, we still know that we don't succeed in most of our patients in achieving curative outcomes. Uh, if we know those answers earlier after these cell therapies, could we imagine a scenario where in the context of the lowest disease burden, we approach giving those patients additional therapy? Um, for example, a repeat dose of lysocaptogen marilu cell or another way of engaging cells. Of course, those need future clinical trials, but with a precise tool, a blood-based tool that entirely non-invasively makes this assessment as early as 15 days, I think we have some unique opportunities.